Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eon's Battle. I have been playing and enjoying the spit out of Kill Team 21. I have played more than half of the available kill teams. There are a lot of available kill teams, but I have so many games under my belt. I want to talk about all of the factions that I have played. I want to go through each one, what makes them great, what makes them not so great, and, and crown one the overall king of kill team. Starting with the Novitiates, the sisters of battle, but the like the little sisters of battle, like the little nuns, they're not wearing the full battle armor. It is a 10 operative kill team, and it is a finagly tricky kill team that I really do enjoy playing. They, they're not very tough. They're seven wound operatives with a, with a five up save, or a four up save, and the tricky thing about them is you have to know their rules inside and out because they have one massive buff and that massive buff is faith points. They start out with a pool of faith points that grows every single turn and you can spend these to change dice results. You can change the fate of the game and you can kind of always guarantee that everything you're trying to do happens. The downside of that is if you don't plan ahead and you don't make sure that everything that is happening is something that you want to happen, it can all fall apart really quickly. The first few times I was playing Novitiates, I was just getting absolutely stomped because I didn't know the Sinner's Gs yet. I didn't know exactly what every operative needed to be doing. And every single one of the operatives is very unique and trying to do something a little bit different. And so if you don't have a firm grasp of this kill team, you're, it's going to fall apart really, really quickly. But once, but once you really start to know it, everything starts to absolutely sing. You do the slingshot method with your sister Repentia. You, you, you're pulling off all of these really cool maneuvers. You're turning your plasma gun into a long range sniper rifle. You have so many great options. And all of a sudden, every single time you roll, it almost doesn't matter what you roll because you can, you've got your faith dice pool and you can change the, the fate of the game to be exactly what you want it to be. It's a really, really fun kill team once you've really got a good grasp. And that's sort of true for most of the bespoke kill teams. There's a, there's tons of rules for every team. But the Sisters Novitiates are very special in that you really need to know, you really need to know that everyone is doing what they're supposed to be doing. There's so many buffs and synergies and proximity buffs where you have to make sure that this operative is standing nearby to this operative so that you can get certain things to go off. There's kind of a couple of different pairs and a diff couple of different blocks that you want to make sure are always near each other so that they can benefit from each other's buffs and synergies. It's a really interesting kill team and I really enjoy playing it. After the Novitiates, Talons of the Emperor, a good old compendium team, the Adeptus Custodes. This team received the very first nerf in the game. And Kill Team has actually been very, very good at keeping everything very balanced and very tight. The They started the game with four action points, and that was too many action points. Although, interestingly, I would love to try playing them again with four action points, or four, uh, yeah, four activations and try and just see how that plays, but they do play very well still at three activations. This is a team I love to give to newbies because it's just four operatives. They're all the same. Oh, you can take um, you can take the spears or the swords. I like to bring one sword. It's just kind of fun. I do think the spears are slightly better because they have long range shooting and very good close combat where the sword acts as a pistol. So it only has a six inch range on its sword gun and you have the, the invulnerable save with the shield. I do like to have one of those in my team just as a little bit of a run it forward. Let him just get blasted by all sorts of stuff. It's so much fun to watch him tank plasma gun shots with his invulnerable save. The Talons of the Emperor are an excellent, excellent team. If it's late or I don't want to do any thinking, I bring Talons of the Emperor because they're simple. They're so simple. They only have a couple of strategic and tactical ploys that matter. They can shoot twice, they can fight twice. They're just an overall very solid team that is from the Compendium. A lot of the Compendium teams, actually a lot of the Compendium teams have been completely just gotten rid of. They've been done away with by Games Workshop just because they've been superseded by bespoke teams that have come out. But the Towns of the Emperor are still going strong. They can do some very, very surprising stuff. Playing against some of the best teams in the game and they can hold their own. If you want to bring Towns of the Emperor, I think the 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 best way to do it, I really enjoy bringing just four custodies, but two custodies and five Sisters of Silence with bolt guns is a very, very solid team that is probably better suited to taking on any list, but four custodies is still really good and I really like to play them. After that, 
Hunter Clade, the Adeptus Mechanicus. This was a white dwarf team, and I put this team together because I heard they were good and I kept losing games all the time. Part of the reason I lose games so often is because I am switching from team to team to team to team. So as soon as I start getting the hang of a team, I've already moved on to something else. And so I'm never really a master. I'm always trying something new. But the Hunter Clade is very good. The Adeptus Mechanicus. It is a large kill team. You can bring a bunch of Skitari or uh, Skitari Rangers or Skitari Vanguards and Rust Stalkers or Infiltrators. I like the Rust Stalkers. They're incredible close combat. Just fists running around the board. They can deal with anything they can catch. They're very, very strong. They're very fast. They have some really, really fun rules. They're really good at double charging and getting lots and lots of attacks through. But being backed up by some really good shooting out of the Skitari, I really, really like this team. I don't have them painted yet, but I did have them sticky tacked down to bases for a couple of games to try them out, and I really enjoyed them. They're a really, really great team. The, the biggest decision in the game is because the Vanguard are better than the Rangers, so you don't really need to worry about that, but Rust Stalkers versus Infiltrators. Infiltrators are very, very good. They can forward deploy. They have an incredible pistol that can dump out, I think, five dice shooting attacks. They're really amazing, but they don't pack the same melee punch that the Rust Stalkers do. I like to bring three Rust Stalkers and one Infiltrator. That Infiltrator, are, I'll forward deploy up the board, not to make him do anything particularly special, but just to make my opponent sweat. Although now I've said that out loud, Nick's sitting right behind me, so now he knows that strategy, so maybe I'll have to switch that up a little bit. But that's what I like to bring, because the, the Rust Stalkers just kill stuff, the Infiltrator is there to disrupt my opponent, maybe scare him off of doing some first turn grenade shenanigans. And then I got my wall of Skitari in the backfield, just ready to shoot at anything that presents itself. It's a really great kill team. After that is actually a little three-in-one kill team, Veteran Guardsman, Imperial Guard, and Imperial Guard Oops All Scion. I have played all three of these kill teams a bunch. The Veteran Guardsmen from the original Octaris box are excellent, although you don't just bring 10 Guardsmen operatives. You bring 10 Guardsmen operatives and then four more bodies because they have the option between bringing four extra bodies or having missiles that they can call down during the game. The missiles aren't bad, but the four extra operatives are so crazy good. I mean, that's bringing you eight extra action points per turn. Absolutely phenomenal. And it lets you bring all of the unique operatives that you sort of need, like the medic, the sniper, the gunners. It lets you have all of those things and it lets them kind of hold back and do what they need to do while your four little piddly nobodies are running around the board capturing objectives. Sometimes you just throw a guardsman at an enemy just to hold them up for a turn. They're not gonna survive, they're gonna die horribly, they're gonna die real bad, real fast, but it lets it lets your you know grenadier guy stay back and plant an explosive, or it lets your sniper guy get into the perfect sniping position where he can go back into conceal and still fire because he has silent weapons. It's a great kill team, a little bit unwieldy to play, 14 bodies does mean you have so many activations that the games can start to drag on a little bit, but I really like them. If you want to play that kill team, but without all of the really cool rules, you can go with the Compendium Guard team, which I've played a few times like against beginners to just try to make the game go move a little bit quicker. But you really should only play Veteran Guardsmen, and it's all the same miniatures. So it doesn't really matter if you want to play Veteran Guardsmen or regular Guardsmen out of the Compendium. It's the same team. The interesting thing that came from the Compendium was the Oops All Scion list, which was just 10 very good individual guardsmen that can kind of spam some heavy weapons or some uh, special weapons like plasma guns and melt guns. A very, very good team. Hilariously better than the new best spoke um, Kazarkin team. Although the Kazarkin have since been buffed to the point where they are a little bit better than the Scions. It's kind of a toss up between depending on how the Ashes of Faith book turns out, because in Ashes of Faith, you can bring Tempesta Scions, but they only hit on fours instead of threes, where the original Scions hit on threes. So it'll be interesting to see. I suppose the Scions are probably going to be deleted from the game and, and, uh, and replaced with the Kazarkin because they're such similar teams. Like, they're literally identical, except for a couple of tiny tweaks to their points, and the miniatures are almost exactly the same. So I would assume that the Tempesta Scions and regular Guardsmen from the Compendium are just going to be kind of let out to pasture, but I do like Oops All Scion. And if you have Oops All Scion, you just run them as Kazarkin, and you're ready to rock and roll. 
It's a very, very interesting team. I like the Vet Guard a lot. I've played them a whole bunch. They're very fun. But speaking of probably the most popular team in all of Kill Team, good old fashioned Space Marines. I haven't played any of the bespoke Space Marine teams, the Phobo Strike team or the new one that they released on Warhammer Community. The, ah, oh, they're not intercessors, they're intercession kill team. But I have played the spit out of Compendium Space Marines. I used to run the five assault intercessors all the time. Although I stopped playing them when it got they got buffed to include a sixth member of the team because I just didn't have a sixth uh, assault intercessor painted and ready to go. So I actually made, an, instead of making one more guy for my assault intercessors, I decided to make and paint six more guys and run a Death Watch kill team. And I run that kill team to this day. Although probably not as good as the Phobos or the Intercession kill team, I really like them because of the incredible number of options that come with the Death Watch kill team. You got the frag cannon, you got the, the, fi the flame throwing bolt gun, you've got plasma guns out the wazoo. You can spam so many plasma guns because you can bring two combi plasma guns and one normal plasma gun and the frag cannon. All of a sudden, four of your six operatives have guns that can one shot most things in the game. And on top of that, you also have your Death Watch ammunition, which comes on your combi weapons because your combi weapons are not combi weapons. They are Death Watch combi weapons. So even after you fired that one amazing plasma shot, which you overcharged for extra fun points, you still have access to the Death Watch ammunition, which is a three different options. Actually, it might be four. And you get to pick every single time you want to fire that gun in an enemy. So you can decide, do I want the piercing one? Do I want the ignores cover? Do I want the straight four, four damage? And you get to make that decision based on what you're shooting at and what the situation is. And it's a really fun little extra game you get to play with yourself. What is the absolute best possible ammunition for this shot right here? They also get classic Space Marine double shooting with their bolt style weapons. They also get only in depth does duty end where even if you made some mistakes and your guy ended up dead, you can pop for one CP and then all of a sudden he's not dead until the end of his next activation so he can still pull off some amazing maneuvers. It's a great little kill team. I The Death Watch Space Marine list I highly rate. I would like to try some of the newer Space Marine teams and see how they play, but I just been enjoying the spit out of classic Space Marines. I'd also love to give 10 scouts a try. I don't know if it'll be good, but I wanted to give it a try. Speaking of Space Marines though, I have lots of experience with Chaos Space Marines in the form of the Legionaries. Now the Legionary team is a team I have played a few times and I'm not, I have not done particularly well with because I am bad at list building. There's almost no list building in Kill Team 21, but there is for the Legionary because each operative, up to six operatives, can bring Marks of Chaos. And the tricky things with those Marks of Chaos, like you've got Slanesh for extra movement, Corn for extra punching, Nurgle for extra resilience, seems like Nurgle is probably the best one, but they interact very uniquely with their strategic and tactical ploys. So it matters a lot which mark you give which operative so that they can do certain things during the game with the strategic and tactical ploys. And it's you kind of have to be able to see the matrix a little bit in your list building so that you know exactly what's going to happen, what you want each operative to do, what each operative strengths and weaknesses. They're in a lot of ways a lot like the Sisters Novitiates in that you you need to know this team like the back of your hand and I don't know it like the back of my hand yet. But they are, they're still Space Marines. They're still incredibly tough. They have some great weapons. The, the Reaper Chain Cannon is a hilariously awesome heavy weapon. I've always just given the Mark of Nurgle for the extra resilience, but then I feel like I'm not taking advantage of everything that they have to offer. I would like to play this team a bunch more times and really kind of learn them properly, but they're a tricky team to get a hold of. But if you're a Chaos Space Marine player, that they've given you the Rolls Royce of teams because you can really build it however you want. You can really have it your way, you could say. It's a really, really fun team and it's a Space Marine team. But you know what Chaos Space Marine team I have played a ton of? Death Guard, another compendium team and a really fun compendium team. The thing that is most fun for me about compendium Death Guard, and there actually isn't a bespoke Death Guard team yet. Presumably it's coming soon in uh, season three of Kill Team is disgustingly resilient. It's a feel no pain roll they get to roll every single time they take damage. Every single time. Doing damage in Kill Team is so hard. And when you actually get damage through onto your opponent, it's such a win, it feels so good. And then as a Death Guard player, you get to go, 
Well, let's see how much damage you really did. And you take a big handful of dice and you roll them and every five and six, that damage is ignored. Basically, all of your operatives have essentially 16 wounds if you do the math hammer, which is really, really strong. And sometimes like if I'm playing against Sean and he's playing my death guard, he rolls so hot all the time. It feels like they have 20 wounds. It's amazing. Sometimes, you know, you can, if you have your plasma gun in the team, your plasma gun can reroll his gets hot dice. So you can always be spamming overcharged plasma. And every time you take damage on yourself for accidentally rolling a one, you, you still get to roll your disgusting and resilient dice. It's beautiful. I love this team. The, the flaw of them is that they only have a four inch movement. So you're very, very slow. So you do have to, you do have to move. Every single turn, you have to move to make sure that you can actually get to the objectives and get your operatives where they need to be. But they are absolute tanks with excellent guns, some excellent heavy weapons, some excellent special weapons. It's a really, really great team. It's also a fairly simple team, so it's a great one to just grab when you don't want to do too much thinking. I really, really like the Death Guard. Discussing really resilient is so much fun. And who doesn't love a Blight Launcher? It's just a Blight Launcher. It just shoots like a a can of expired dog food that smashes open on the battlefield and everybody smells the stinkiness and then they die. It's wonderful. Speaking of wonderful, Pathfinders, the Tau Pathfinders. This is a team I don't like that much, but it's excellent. It is an excellent team. I'm just not the biggest fan of shooting and that is the Tau's strength is their shooting. You've got two, count them, two rail guns. You've got a plasma gun that doesn't get hot. You got all sorts of amazing things and the thing of the Tau is their marker lights. Marker lights are cheating. They're not actually cheating, they're in the game, but they feel like cheating because as the more marker lights you get on an opponent, the more things that you're allowed to ignore about the game. You get a marker light on there, you're all of a sudden rerolling a dice. You get two marker lights on there, you're ignoring cover. And as you move up the number of marker lights, which you're really not gonna get more than three, it's probably a waste to get more than three, although they have some shenanigans that can make enemies count as having more marker lights than they already do, all of a sudden, you can ignore conceal, and that can be absolutely brutal if you don't do an amazing job setting up the train, because all of a sudden your operative is safely behind cover with the conceal order, and then all of a sudden the Tau just turn it off and nuke them off the board. The Tau are excellent for those players who like to castle up and like to shoot from across the board, but man, can they not be fun to play against sometimes. Holy cow, if you can believe it, Sean, big fan of the Tau Pathfinders for some reason. <laughs> But they are a really fun team. I do like the Tau a lot. And it is it is fun to be on the shooting side of them. Not as much fun to be on the receiving side of them, but they are a really, really great team. Marker Lights have some great shenanigans, and they have some great drone shenanigans, including multiple activation, chain activation shenanigans involving their drones. So there's some really, really fun things that you can pull off. These kind of slingshot techniques with their operatives. It's a really, really interesting team. And another team that I love is the Commandos. One of the first teams ever in Kill Team 21, the Commandos slash Greenskins. I've actually played Compendium Greenskins a lot, and they have some surprising stuff in the Compendium. They're actually a very, very solid shooting team, but the Commandos are just better. They just have more options and more better guns. So the Commandos are a great team because where a lot of the different kill teams require you to kind of know everything and see the matrix and understand every single thing going on about your team. The commandos are very much each individual guy is tooled up to do a job and they can kind of just go off and do it. There's a little bit of some things like you got to, you know, your comms guy and your knob can hand out extra action points to guys. So you do have to think about what where they want to be and what they want to do. But other than that, everybody can kind of just go off and just start wrecking stuff, which is very orky. It's exactly what your orcs want to be doing, and it's what they can do. And you've also got the uh, the Grot and the Squig Bomber, which now you can bring both of them in any list. It's excellent. Ah, the Bomb Squig. Such a tricky unit to actually pull off, but when you pull it off, it becomes such an annoying threat. Just got one little Squig running up the board, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm just going to shoot it. But all of a sudden, everything that's near it is in danger if you shoot at it. And it's like, well, maybe I don't shoot it, but then if it gets to you, it's a problem. It's a really, really fun unit. The orc, the orc green, the orc commandos are a very, very fun kill team. And speaking of fun kill teams, I have three honorable mentions. Honorable mentions because I don't play these kill teams anymore. They are unplayable. They are no longer real. But Ecclesiarchy All Repentia. If you're playing Compendium Sisters of Battle, you do have the option to bring 10 Repentias. 
I love this kill team because they have a six up feel no pain. Anything that they catch with their eviscerator chain swords will die. You can spam some grenades to give them some semblance of shooting. The problem with this kill team is as soon as you've played it a couple of times and your opponent realizes that you have absolutely no shooting, they will just keep all of their guys on engage. They'll shoot you off the board before they can you can get to them. It's they're unwinnable. It is they're an unplayable kill team that I've played a ton of. They're yeah, they're not they're not that good, but they're really fun. But the yeah, the novitiates are much better. Going along the same lines, the Kadra Mercenary, the Crute from the Compendium. Far better than they were in Kill Team 18. Far better. With that being said, they are also an unplayable kill team. <laughs> they have great rules. They were the first thing to have chain activation and 8 inch move on their crude hounds. They had some phenomenal rules and absolutely no ability to deal any damage whatsoever. They're just it's obnoxiously bad in combat and in shooting. It's, it's really sad. I've played them so many times. But yeah, the, the Far Soccer Kin Band, the new Crude team, is far and away a million times better. And sh if you want to play Crude, that should be the one you play. But a moment of silence for the old Kadra Mercenary. They were a great team while they lasted, although they weren't even back then. And kind of going along the same lines with the Crude, the Hunter Clade, also from Compendium Tau, oops all stealth suits. Once again, really fun rules. You're always in conceal. You have amazing guns. All of your movement counts as fly. The problem is six operatives with two activations apiece is nothing. Every single thing in the game outperforms you on activations. You'll if you lose one operative, you've already lost the game and often you'll lose a few operatives turn one. It's really, really rough. They are an unplayable kill team, but I would love to see the stealth suits make a comeback, maybe either in a white dwarf or maybe a second try on a bespoke Tau kill team because they were really, really fun. But man. Yeah, those three teams, I have them, I love them, but I will never play them again because <laughs> they just they just can't do nothing. If I had to rank one of the kill teams that I have as my overall favorite kill team, I think I got to give it to the Hunter Clade Adeptus Mechanicus. So much fun, all around very solid team with not too many shenanigans. And the shenanigans are going to be a little bit of a, you know, salt to preference. Like some people are going to want all of the rules under the sun. Some people are going to want the simplest possible kill team. I think Hunter Clade exists right in the middle where it's not too complicated, but it's not too simple either. They can do everything they want to do and they have a really strong melee punch and I really like close combats, but I really like close combat that is actually backed up by really good shooting from the rear. So Hunter Clade is my pick for my favorite kill team but it's completely subjective and everybody is going to have their own personal preference when it comes to kill team. Every one of these teams is excellent, maybe except for the honorable mentions, but every one of these kill teams is excellent and I have had so much fun playing them. The only thing I love more than these kill teams I've mentioned is our Patreon. Over there we have a new STL train pack every single month. This month we have the Gothic Modular Trenches, a trench network with available bits for both Imperial and Chaos factions. We also make one extra episode of Eons of Battle every single week where we take a look at our viewers' miniatures and give some ideas and critiques of how to improve their painting. We host live Discord hangouts and we have a tier where you can get your name on one of my Black Templar Space Marines and you can join the Crusade. We're also streaming on Twitch every Tuesday and Thursday from 5.30 to 8 p.m. Central Time. I love me some Kill Team. I love the spit out of Kill Team. And even though I have mentioned rattled off all of these different Kill Teams, I have so many more in the works. So there may be a part two coming in another two years. Thanks for watching.